Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a quick video to showcase a new product that just arrived at 3MA that I thought some of you guys may be interested in. Just maybe not to buy because it's quite expensive. A Boulder amp is definitely outside of most people's price range. But I wanted to showcase it because it's a beautiful piece. It's you know one of those cool things to at least check out. And I'll have some music clips in the future from it. But I brought up another topic that I thought would be helpful to understand that can translate to other purchases you make. You know, just buying based on brand name or aesthetic is a minefield. You know, sometimes the innards match the outer uh, and sometimes they don't. And the price tag as well. So one thing you have to understand is some brands have different philosophies of other brands. And understanding that is much more important than understanding either the chassis or the name of the company. And uh, Boulder has a long reputation, does a great job with their products. Um, you can feel pretty secure buying their products. Uh, you're going to pay a pretty penny. Um, but one thing that you have to be cognizant of, whether that might be the right choice for you or not, is that it is a direct coupled design. And what does that mean? Well, I'm not going to get into uh, the whole engineering aspect. When other people can do a better job than me, you know, I let them do it. So you can do a research on YouTube or even Google. I know Paul McGowan did a very primitive video on it. He's good for the more, you know, basic type videos and then ones that go more extensive. But in short, what does it mean to you in terms of when you're picking out gear? Well, direct coupled from a sound perspective takes the capacitors out of the signal path. So in theory, if you can hear capacitors and think that they have a you know, deleterious effect on the music, then that would be a problem that you'd want to solve. Now, everything in music and design is trade-offs. What do you get from taking those capacitors out? Well, you've got a situation where DC can get into your equipment and get amplified in your amplifier and DC being amplified by an amplifier or a preamp and an amp as well that's DC coupled can be very bad for your speakers uh, and damage things so you have to have very good protection for those kind of things and there's two companies that I know that I would pretty much trust with DC coupled Boulder and Spectral and Spectral has been in two of probably the top 100 rooms I've ever heard of all time. Spectral amps have been in at least two of those. Um, now, I wouldn't say that their amps have been the primary reason I like those rooms. The rooms themselves were amazing. In fact, one of them was a room I did in Houston on my channel. You can go back and watch it. It's Avalon, Spectral Gear, and it's just an amazing room in general. But they had spectral amps. And then there was another one, a show I attended probably 15, 20 years ago in San Francisco where spectral amps were mated with Wilson Audio Watt Puppies. Not their big Alexandria or anything like that. And just the way the dealer had it set up, very wide, ideal for that room, made it great uh, on top of obviously the gear that was being used. So those two stood out. So that being said, Boulder as well has always had, you know, very good rooms um, at shows and a lot, like I said, a long-standing reputation. But you're going to want to understand the challenges and the advantages and disadvantages, and the risk of having something that's a little more finicky and potentially reliability issue versus more traditional amp designs. So, and then as well, you know, some of the advantages of DC couple is that it's got you know, bandwidth all the way down to zero hertz flat. Well, if you're rolling things off to a sub, you know, the extra bass performance or better bass performance may not be that is theoretical with that design, may not be even applicable to you in your setup, um, as well as the capacitor. If, you, if you're using amps that have great capacitors and you can't really hear them having a problematic effect in the sound, then the more traditional, safer designs may be uh, good for you. But if you want to push the envelope, you want to go for a DC coupled, try that. I would encourage you to just research, research sometimes the design and the philosophies behind the companies versus just the name or the aesthetics. Those are great, and Boulder definitely checks off the boxes in both of those areas. But one thing you're going to want to do is understand their design philosophy, DC coupled, and make sure that you understand that that works for you, your risk profile, your other 
your gear, how you've got it set up, because that will complete the picture. You know, when you're spending the money that you're spending, there's going to be a lot of options, Boulder, MBL, you know, tons of different options. So understand more than just the aesthetic, understand the design philosophy behind it, and I think it'll serve you well in the future. So without further ado, let me show you the new piece, though, that came in. It's really cool. Okay, we've got a new arrival at 3MA. This is a huge Boulder amplifier, 2160. Hard to uh, give an impression of just how big this is. You kind of benchmark it against the Estelon speakers. Barely fits on this rack. Special design rack, huge amp stand by Tate. Beautiful heat sink design. Obviously that is not cheap to do. Just the chassis alone is going to be very expensive. And can't even hook it up yet because they don't have a 220 outlet in this room yet. So I think the electrician will come and put that in. Nice little manual comes with. Obviously it should for I'm sure the price, but it's always nice to have that attention paid to manuals. It's a good little litmus test I use in the past. It's mainly you got balanced inputs. And I think this is a uh, direct coupled amp. But it does have some protection for DC, which is good. Certain direct coupled amps, I think it's like the Spectral, they even require certain speaker cables. Different types of protection, which is good. Yeah. Man, this is such a pain to international stuff. Isle of Man, you know, Thailand, China. I got, is that where all that I stuff's going? Huge, I got 10 albums going to China. Jeez. And it's just, I don't know, UPS doesn't work now. So I have to send them USPS. Oh my God. USPS to they China? They have an international, so as well. Okay. That's the only way I can manage it. Wow. But it's a bit cheaper. Hmm. Obviously, within the family of Boulder products, has a lot of advantages to linking them up. So, you're going to get 600 watts um, continuous down into two ohms with almost no distortion. So, it's very powerful. Gain, that's about, you know, probably about normal for most amps, maybe a tad lower. Um, very good input impedance, it'll be friendly with most uh, preamps. Although you're not gonna want one that may have some DC and it always will uh, trigger that protection, which some preamps do leak a little bit. So they could do 110, I don't know how with that connection on the back. But a uh, beautiful piece. Long standing company in the industry. I'll have uh, some clips when we can get it hooked up and uh, play some music for you.